OK, so we're going to use this pro forma as our lesson plan and we're going to fill one out as though we were planning for an actual lesson. So we start off with some basic information about the class. So the name of the teacher, date and time, and the class level. In this particular case, our class is going to be an elementary class and the room be room three. Having looked through the registers, we see that the expected number of students for this particular class is going to 10. This will help us in creating our worksheet copies. The context of the lesson for this class is going to be present continuous tense, and it may well be the first time that this particular level of class has been introduced to this tense. So our focus is going to be fairly general, and it's going to look at actions that are happening around now. The teaching aids is basically anything that we bring to the lesson that will help us to teach it. So we know that in our study phase we're going to be using some worksheets and during the activate phase we're going to be doing an activate activity. So here you can fill in worksheets and activate activity. Then we've got our learner objectives and personal aims. If you remember the learner objectives are what we are hoping the students are going to be able to do after the lesson has been taught. So we're hoping that by the end of this lesson, the students are going to be able to both recognize and to be able to use the present continuous tense. The personal aims for my particular lesson are that I'm going to improve upon a couple of things, which are both my board work and my elicitation techniques from the students. A couple of anticipated problems for the students. Pronunciation, first of all, and secondly, using the present continuous tense in a real context. Anticipated problems for the teacher. I'm afraid that I may get drawn away from the actual lesson plan itself, so following the sequence of the lesson. And the solutions to both of these for pronunciation, as we've mentioned, would be drilling. And for the students using the tense in context, that would be part of our Activate activity. And one of the things I can make sure that they can do to overcome this particular problem is to have a strong study phase. By having that strong study phase, I can check that the students do understand this particular tense and its context before they actually try to use it. For the anticipated problems for the teacher, following the sequence of the lesson, again, is to have my plan available throughout the lesson.